Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. 
Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Since 1947, the United States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. studio somewhere within the great granite state of new hampshire where the state motto is still live free or die it is not a big government or bust here it is tuesday november the 29th in the year of our lord 2016 it is a rather dark gray day in fact we got a weather winter weather advisory here uh in southern new hampshire until about 10 or 11 this morning uh, nothing's happened thus far uh, a little bit of rain, but it could be turning into sleet and a little bit of snow, maybe. Uh, it's that time of year. You know, fr- uh, friends, I have got to tell you, last night I found out that I caught something. Yeah, last night I I realized and I found out that I caught the Christmas spirit. Yep, yes indeed. I am full-blown in Christmas mode right now. I don't know why. It usually takes me a little bit long. Well, probably because I haven't had... All I I don't go to like uh, Black Friday sales. No, I don't do that. And as a matter of fact, I avoid malls and shopping plazas. Um, and as a matter of fact, last year was the first time that I did not go to a single brick and mortar store. And uh, yeah, I did all of my Christmas shopping online. No, not just Amazon. You do realize that just about every single brick-and-mortar store that you could possibly go to, including most mom-and-pop shops on Main Street, have websites now. And you don't have to actually walk in their store. You don't have to deal with the crowds and and the, the ignorant people and all that kind of stuff. So I did all my shopping online. And I only bought, I didn't do a lot on Amazon, tell you the truth, I didn't. Uh, because there are other stores that you can, you can go to target online. Uh, a couple of the stores that I purchased from are just mom and pop shops on main street, uh, here in Concord. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. Maybe that's why I'm in such a good mood. Cause I know I, I no longer have to deal with those crowds. Uh, well, you know, it's kind of nice to see other people out there out and about in the Christmas spirit too. It is nice. Uh, but for the most part, at these super sales like Black, uh, Black Friday events, um, it's not so much fun. It really isn't. As a matter of fact, the the, uh, the numbers are in. And supposedly, they're in for the Black Friday weekend. And 
Brick and mortar sales are down slightly. However, internet sales are way, way up more than compensating for the, uh, the loss in brick and mortar, um, which is a good sign for the economy. But then again, you have to you have to ask, well, where is all that money coming from if we still have 94 million people unemployed? You know, I, at this time of year, I hate to I hate to say this, but when you have a population that is well fed, like ours is, there's no desire to get out there and work. And I think that's well, I don't think I know that is one of the main problems with the millennial generation today. You know, the, the kids that, that are running around in the streets protesting and demanding that, that uh, electors, uh, delegates don't vote the way they're supposed to for Donald Trump on, the uh, was it December 19th, December 20th? Um, yeah. See, they're, they have all that free time in their hands because they don't have a job. And they don't have a job because mom and dad, who think that they're being very loving and cooperative and understanding and supportive allow little Susie and little Johnny, who are now in their mid twenty, mid and late 20s, and in some cases 30s, early 30s, to sleep in the basement or in their old childhood room instead of saying, get out, get a job, and live on your own. So these kids are, are well-fed, and this is the same thing with 94 million Americans who are unemployed. We've got, we've got food stamp costs that are going through the roof. I just learned this morning that there was a, um, a former child star uh, Leaf, not Leaf Garrett, uh, um, oh, geez. Lance Kerwin. Everybody remember Lance Kerwin from the 70s? He was like a, what was the big magazine, the teeny girl magazine back then? Um, uh, Tiger Beat. Remember Tiger Beat? Yeah, if you're over the age of 40 or 45, you probably remember Tiger Beat. Well, Lance Kerwin was one of those child actors of the 70s that was all over Tiger Beat. You couldn't go, I mean, you couldn't, no, they had Tiger Beat in the grocery store. Every time I went to the grocery store with my mom, because I had to, because of my age, uh, you know, you saw that they had the, the teeny bopper magazines on display, like, like much like they do with all the other, you know, the star, like Inquirer and stuff today. Well, Tiger Beat or Teen Beat, whatever it was, used to be right next to the cash register, uh, register like today's tabloid newspapers. And it, all you saw was Lance Kerwin. Well, evidently, back in 2010, him and his wife in Hawaii, <laughs> Hawaii, were charged and pleaded no contest to um, a small amount of food stamp fraud. So, well, I mean, obviously, Lance Kerwin is not a millennial. He was born way before, well, he's like 60 now, I think, somewhere around there. But anyway, uh, you know... It, we have 94 million Americans that are that are getting some form of government assistance, and that includes that may include food stamps. We have food stamp costs in some states that are going through the roof. Well, I, I, I hate to be the one that sounds like a Grinch at this time of year, but we need to cut back on that stuff because we need to get these people out there and contributing to our society instead of draining from it. And a lot of these people are... Uh, the vast majority of them, of the 94 million who are out of work, um, are fully capable of supporting themselves. They're fully capable of getting up, uh, getting in their car, or taking the bus, or the train, or the taxi to a real job. Uh, I, I happen to catch a, uh, um, a Judge Judy episode a few days ago. I don't watch that stuff usually, but it was, I, I was at my mom's and we were, and, and, and you know, for over the hol uh, Thanksgiving holiday and we weren't really paying attention to it. It was late in the afternoon and Judge Judy comes on and there's this young man, he's 19 years old, has a 17 year old girlfriend who's been the girlfriend's dad is suing him for, for some damages that I don't think that he caused, but, um, the, and, and not, nevertheless, he's being sued. Now, now, granted, the 17-year-old daughter is white. The 19-year-old uh, boy, and I didn't say man for a reason, the 19-year-old boy um, looks either to be Latino or 
mixed race. But that's not the main point. I And actually, he was a good-looking kid. And he was fairly, you know, for that age group, he was fairly well-dressed. He wasn't in court in ripped jeans. He was respectfully dressed, which I was kind of surprised about. But he had a very awkward, weird, strange, bad attitude that Judge Judy picked up on and kept pounding him on about it. And this kid wasn't getting it. He just wasn't getting it. She was actually trying to help his case, but his attitude was, was such that he was hurting himself more than helping himself. Now, you know Judge Judy, if you've ever watched her or you know anything about her, she's very matter of fact, straight to the point, doesn't hold any punches. And, you know, this, this kid, he, he, had, he had a couple of ears that stuck out like Will Smith, and I can say that because my ears stick out a little bit. So I can make fun of other people whose ears stick out farther than mine. <laughs> and his ears were sticking out there. But that wasn't the point. The point was is that he had pierced ears with, uh, I don't know if they were real diamonds or not, but diamond studs in, in both ears. And Judge Judy asked him, well, what does he do during the day? Does he go to school? No, he only attended college one semester. So what is, what's his job? He works at McDonald's part-time. What's he do the rest of the time? Hang out. And when Judge Judy questioned him further, he says, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm waiting, you know, for better opportunities. Wait, you're not going to college. You're working at McDonald's part-time. You're hanging out the rest of the time with friends and your girlfriend, waiting for an opportunity. You're not doing anything to go out there and find that opportunity. You're waiting for it. Now, Judge Judy simply asked him, do you expect that opportunity to just come drop in your lap if you're not out there pursuing it? You're not doing anything to make yourself available to that opportunity. But his attitude was, well, it's no big deal. Opportunity is going to come my way. No, it's not. It's not going to come, to, you know... I, well, I, su- I don't know. I suppose if he wants the well, he doesn't live in an area where he's going to be found by a talent agent to be sent to Hollywood and make movies or something. I suppose that could happen. It is highly unlikely. But here it is. He's 19 years old with no plan for his future but to work in McDonald's part time and to court this girl. No wonder daddy doesn't like him. He's sitting around doing nothing most of the day, working at McDonald's part-time. But I will give him this. At least he's doing better than 94 million other adults out there in this country. At least he's working. I'll give him kudos for that. But this is where we're at. We have a very well-fed population that doesn't need to work for it. The first time in history of mankind. Do folks realize that? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want people to starve. I don't want children to go hungry. I don't want people thinking that I'm some evil ogre, some Grinch. But I am about people taking personal responsibility. I don't care how hard you have to work. I don't care how little that you earn as long as you're earning it honestly. Because then when you're doing that, opportunity will come your way. Eventually it will. I no, you, you probably won't get rich. Most of us won't. But you'll be able to provide for yourself and your family and be a positive contributor to society and that's worth a hell of a lot. And you want to talk about you know, male ego. You want to talk about having a boost to your ego? How about being able to provide for yourself and your family? You know, we got to get rid of all these deadbeat dads out there that aren't paying for their kids. You know, all these, all these boys running around becoming uh, baby daddies to multiple girls. And you girls out there listening, man, you got to stop. Let me be blunt for a second. That boy does not love you. 
He loves the feeling of sex with you, but he does not love you. Let me be very blunt. Close your legs and wait. Wait until you're an adult and you're in a serious relationship with someone. You don't got to give it, because let me tell you something. Why don't you give this a test? And dads, you should let your daughters hear this. Give it a test. If your boyfriend is trying to pressure you into having sex that you don't think you're ready for it, don't give in. Wait about a month and see if he's still with you. 90% of the time, he will not, which just goes to show he doesn't really love you. I mean, just being blunt about this during the, during the Christmas season, I'm giving gifts of wisdom here. Uh, we got to take responsibility for our own actions. I don't care how old you are. You have to take responsibility for yourself. Government cannot do that. Unless, of course, you do something illegal, then government throws you in jail, then government's responsible for you. But I don't think most people want to be in jail. Yeah, there are some people that, that can't. They've been in jail so much they can't operate and function outside in outside society, free society. So that's where they always end up. But most of us would rather not experience such a thing. We want to stay out of jail. Because we don't want government taking care of us that way. Isn't that funny that, that you get a lot of Americans that will put themselves in financial jail with the government? They might as well be in regular jail. Because they don't have the freedom to do anything else. Well, I, I, I don't know what prison life is like, but I, I'm going to assume you probably just can't sit around playing video games all day long um, in your cell, in your jail cell, like you can in your mom and dad's basement. So maybe that's the reason why they don't want to go to jail, because they don't, they don't get to play video games. Uh, there was something I saw the other day that uh, I probably shouldn't even mention this, but um, there is a part or a profession now, um, there, there's something called gaming professionals. And last year, the top earners earned over six figures. In fact, uh, there was a tie. There was a team of six people out of Japan, I do believe. Um, and this team of six people, six boys... They each, by playing video games, you know, Xbox and that type of thing. I don't know what games they were playing, but anyway, they earned $1.1 million for playing video games in 2015. I did not realize there was that kind of money playing video games. Well, mom and dad with a millennial in your basement, if your kid wants to sit down there and do nothing, Maybe you should force him to get out there on the professional gaming circuit. At least make something. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement. 
But now, there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. That is a number that you can utilize to call this program live this morning. Uh, I do have some Christmas music to share with you this morning, as I promised. And we'll get to that after the, uh, after the next break. But first, everybody's talking about this, uh, this, this attacker at the Ohio State University campus. You know, one of those venerable institutes of higher learning. And even Tim Kaine is still out there today talking about how sad the the gun attack is. Now, I don't know where, and, 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 and I had people arguing with other people I've seen on social media uh, about whether or not it was uh, reported as a gun attack. And it was reported on CNN, CBS, and Fox as a gun attack, an active shooter. Well, I don't know. I guess you want if you want to call it a knife. A knife and a gun have one thing in common. They both contain metal. I suppose that's the, the commonality. I can see how one can, can um, you know, confuse stab wounds with bullet wounds. They're both made with metal, I guess. I'd... But you had Tim Kaine out there, who's yesterday and today, who's still talking about the gun attack. On Ohio State campus. Now, I'm looking for a gun attack. I don't see one. I see a guy who ran up on some students and other people with his vehicle and then jumped out and started stabbing people and injured nine. Now, the gun attack happened when, when a police officer, a duly uniformed, you know, uh, armed police officer, shot the suspect dead and stopped him in his tracks. Oh, my goodness. A gun stopped, stopped a horrific crime in progress and saved lives. How terrible. Guns are evil. But now, now we've got this, this kid uh, who police are, are trying to search for a motive. He was a Somali refugee, Muslim, who posted all over the place on Facebook and other social media how America and Americans needed to stop bugging their nose into Muslim business in how anti-Muslim Americans are, in that Allah will punish them. They, they, they still need to look into this kid's motivation. He is 18, 18 or 19 years old is what they're saying. Uh, Abdul Razak Ali Artan, A-R-T-A-N. Somali refugee. By the way, there are some 43 thousand refugees that were brought into this country uh, via Obama over the last eight years. Yeah, one nut job among 43,000 is very low, I agree. But 
could we have screened him out before he got here? Maybe, maybe not. But shouldn't we try to figure that out before we let more in? Uh, yeah, I'm on the side of caution, erring on the side of caution, like President-elect Trump. But hey, Senator Kane, it wasn't a gun attack. Weren't you guys complaining about fake news? Isn't that a fake news story that this is nothing but a gun attack? The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. 
Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Welcome back, friends and fans alike. 603-835-3226. Again, that is the uh, the standard official Rod Echo Show call-in number. And that number is alive and active between 9 a.m. and noon Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. And before I get into the next stories, I did promise you that I would bring you some Christmas music. Now, for the rest of this week, uh, what I am doing, I'm saving the new stuff that has been sent to me until next week, starting December 5th. So here is some of the stuff that was sent in last year. Uh, this, uh, what I'll do is I'll play some of the more popular ones, uh, the ones that I know that, are, that, that tended to be more popular because they got the most feedback, um, I guess. Um, but, um, yeah, well, uh, these are in no particular order. They're not necessarily my favorites from last year, but, uh, uh, evidently the listening audience happened to like them. Uh, here's one from the Chrysogis brothers calls, uh, called wise men seek him. And, um, you spell Chrysogis as C H R I S A G I S brothers. And I do believe their website is chrysogisbrothers.com. And um, now what I understand from last year is that they really got a boost. I'm not going to say it's all because of me, uh, but it's because of you, the listener. They embrace, they do more than, uh, I do believe they're Christian. They're a Christian duo. Um, and people embrace them. They really like their Christmas and non-music or non-Christmas music as well. They've, they've done, they've, they've been around for a few years too. So it's not like they're, they're brand new to the scene or anything, but um, yeah, these guys, these are, they're, they're put together fairly well. Um, They have, they have a a nice, easy listening. You can easily listen to voices. Um, And and there, there is some talent there. I believe that the Krasaji, uh, Krasajis brothers have some talent and uh, they choose to use that talent to, Praise God. And I don't have a problem with that at all. But here is Wise Men Still Seek Him from the Chrysogis Brothers. Out of the east they came bearing the gifts from afar. Wise men of old sought their dreams on a path of a star. All of their hopes were wrapped up around Bethlehem's day. Jesus, the light of the world, come to seek and to save. Wise men still seek Him. Pure hearts receive Him. Wise men. Life's an enigma for those in the throes of despair. But out of the darkness he shines like a laser of truth. And Jesus, the light of the world, 
born to shine for you. Wise men still seek Him. Your hearts receive Him. Wise men believe and follow the star. Wise men still seek Him. Your hearts receive Him. Wise men believe and follow the star. If you can't find your way through the darkness of everyday life, lift up your eyes over Bethlehem skies, where one truth is still shining bright. Wise men still seek Him. Your hearts receive Him. Wise men believe and follow the star. Wise men still seek Him. Your hearts receive Him. Wise men believe and follow the star. Wise Men Still Seek Him by the Chrysagis Brothers, chrysagisbrothers.com. If you are a musician and you have some original Christmas music that you would like to have uh, played on this program, then send it as an MP3 format to the Rod Eccles Show at gmail.com. Full details are over at rodeckles.net. Um, click, the, the, click the Rod Eccles Show button. You'll get full details in, on, uh, in the rules on how to submit and what to submit. And you have until next week, Monday the 5th, to do that. And um, it's some good stuff. I'm, I've gotten some good stuff in, in last year. And uh, so far, some of the stuff that I've gotten this year has been pretty good. So I look forward to bringing that to you as well starting next week. Uh, we'll do a mix of, of new and old all throughout the uh the holiday season, uh, oh, holiday Christmas season. Um, well, and somebody asked me if I if I did Hanukkah songs, and I said I don't know of many Hanukkah songs out there. So if you have a Hanukkah, how, how do we say how do we say it in Hebrew? Hanukkah. If you have any Hanukkah songs, um, then submit those as well. I'll be more than happy to, to play those as well. Uh, but please remember, just because you submit does not mean that it gets airtime. I mean, it has to be good. Uh, so Christmas and Hanukkah songs are welcome. And uh, just go to rodeckles.net for the full submission rules and details on how to do that. MP3 format only, please. I know some people, um, I, I, you can read MP, we can read MP4, um, but I guess that's a little bit more difficult to get. I'm not familiar with this stuff, so I'm not, like I said, I'm not a techie. But I guess um, on some computers, MP4 can be difficult to actually do properly. M MP3 is still the standard. Um, I don't think we've gotten, our equipment has gotten to the point where most people have MP4 capability, so stick with MP3, you're safer. I know MP4 is supposed to sound better, but... I I guess my ears are getting too old to to tell the difference at this particular point. I don't know. In any case, there you have it. And we'll be bringing you an additional song next hour as well as a third song in the third hour. So stick around for those as well. This Somali kid, uh Somali refugee kid who did the car and knifing attack at Ohio State is actually something that has been called for by ISIS. Now, here's a piece on PJ Media. All the way back on October 4th of 2016, ISIS calls for random knife attacks in alleys, forests, beaches, quiet neighborhoods, just about everywhere. Now, I remember this story and I remember bringing it to you. Now, let me just refresh your memory. 
This was issued in a magazine issued by the Islamic State, and it advises lone jihadists, lone wolf jihadists, to get over any squeamishnesses about using knives and embrace sharp objects as widely available weapons of jihad in nighttime stabbing campaigns. Now, evidently, this kid did not follow these rules to the letter because I think he did his attack in broad daylight. But ISIS is out there telling all of their wonderful little jihad jihadists out there, whether they're a member of some secret underground cell network or not, just to go out there and commit jihad. With not Because, you know, Americans have this terrible, well, we're told Americans have this terrible squeamishness with guns. Uh, well, that's only the left, by the way. That's not most of the of the moderate or the or the conservative uh, political wings. Just the just the liberals. Even there is even a lib- bunch of liberals that have guns. Believe it or not, yeah, there are. There are a bunch of liberals. That, you know, we have uh, nearly a hundred million Americans own own a firearm, at least one. Well, not all of them are going to be right of political center. We know some of we know some liberals actually hunt. Yeah, they hunt game, you know, animals like deer and rabbit and squirrel and pheasant and ducks and quail and all that wonderful, you know, big game like bear and elk and moose. Yeah, there are liberals out there that do that. Somebody once asked, I... (laughs) Uh, a stupid liberal female. She said, um, well, there's a couple of stupid sayings about coming from liberal a uh, college-age people, mostly female. One was about hunting. You know, if, if people want to hunt so bad, why don't they just go and hunt cows? That's what they're there for. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever, have you ever tried to hunt a cow? A wild cow? Yeah, we don't have wild cows. In order for you to hunt a cow, you got to go on a farmer's land and into the farmer's field and, and take out one of the farmer's herd. There's no such thing as hunting cow. <laughs> that That's one. And another wonderful liberal female on, on a college campus once is famous for stating that you know, we don't need to hunt. We shouldn't have to hunt for food. All we have to do if we want to eat meat is just go to the grocery store where it's made. Now, I don't know if that was, if that's just a, an, an idiot savant walking on, you know, upright. Or if they really are that clueless as to where their food comes from. I would assume it's a little bit of both. Yeah, go to the grocery store where everybody else gets their meats, meat because that's where it's made. I, you, know, you can't make this stuff up, folks. You really can't. Now, with that, you have ISIS still calling for random knife attacks all over this country, all over the West. Not just here, but in Europe as well. And I think you should start understanding that these people are going to be coming out of the woodwork with knives. And yes, knives can be just as deadly as a bullet. Of course, you can't stab as many people in the same amount of time as you can shoot people. But hey, you know, if you kill one person, one infidel in the name of Allah, you're going to, you know, you're going to be in paradise. So that is their teaching. You're going to be rewarded in paradise. So the teaching is go out and martyr yourself by knifing some people then if you can't get a gun. What are we going to do? Have knife control? We're going to have knife control legislation now? Are are we going to have to register our knives? What kind of knife are we going to need to register? I mean, are you going to have to register the Bushmaster types of knives? You know, like the, like the uh, crocodile Dundee style knife. What about the other knives? What about your kitchen knives? 
Those can be just, in fact, those are probably even more dangerous. Because kitchen knives are, you know, really made to do one thing. That's slice. I mean, that's all they're there for. They're there to slice stuff. A knife has really no other... Well, I know some people use butter knives as a, as a screwdriver. But other than that, that's really... You know, your kitchen knives are, are made for one purpose. To slice stuff. Slice and chop and dice. And if you can slice and dice a carrot and potato... What do you think it's going to do to flesh, especially human flesh? Well, all these people are taking this to heart. And this will not be the last incident of knife attacks here in the U.S. of A. By these types of people. Especially these so-called refugees. You know, we saved them from from a life of destitution and probably early death, and what do they repay us by uh, by not assimilating? I got a story here in Buffalo, New York. Uh, paper pile, paper pile. Do, 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 do. Paper pile. Here we go. Buffalo, New York. Where is that story? Buffalonews.com is reporting... Now, you, now you got to understand, Buffalo City Public Schools, um, as far as a ranking standpoint in this country goes, is is one of the, they're in the bottom percentile um, of public schools in America. Buff, Buffalo Public Schools are, are, are not known as being very good. This might be one of the problems with why... Buffalo schools are not very good. Buffalonews.com. 85 languages spoken in Buffalo schools as new Americans enter classrooms. How the hell can you teach kids if you're trying to teach them in their home language when you have 85 different languages? Now, folks, there has to be one general, specific common language. And in this country, it happens to be English. Now, I guarantee you, if you go to any of those 85 countries, they're not going to cater to anyone other than their home language. So these people need to learn English. Not English as a second language, but English as a first language. Now, I understand the, the older the kid is, the, the more difficult it is to, to get them to learn English, just like it's very, uh, well, my sister was telling me that um, in, uh, in, in Syracuse School District, one of the Syracuse area school districts, you have to take, in order to graduate, you've got to take one, 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 one year, one year of a foreign language, French, Spanish, or German, or the dead language of Latin will also do. What what is one year gonna do? I, look, these are the no child left behind rule stuff. This is the kind of stuff that screws up kids. So instead of saying that they they need to probably take three or four years to become moderately proficient in a particular language, all they got to do is take one year and get through one year in order to graduate. It's nonsense. Not to mention, how many? What was the percentage? How many kids that can't read past an, past an eighth grade level? So we're going to be teaching foreign language to kids who can't really speak or write or read English very well. Uh, now, look, I'm all for learning a foreign language. I think it's a very good idea. I mean, I wish I was more fluent in more than just English. But you got to learn English first. If you're in the U.S. of A., you've got to learn English first. You've got to be proficient in your own language. Because if you're not proficient in your own language, how the hell are you going to be proficient in somebody else's language? You're not. So, 
Buffalo is bogged down by this multiculturalism stuff that's causing their entire public school system to, to be dragged to the bottom. In other words, kids aren't really learning anything. These teachers have to deal with so many different languages instead of saying, okay, this is an English-only class, now you got to keep up, learn it. Learning, no, no, evidently that's not the case. By the way, if you, uh, if you like going to Starbucks, well, maybe you shouldn't ought to go to Starbucks. I'll tell you about that as soon as we get back. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay 50 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. Starbucks, you might want to think twice about it. Um, I don't know, maybe this will get Starbucks to think twice about its no gun, no cop policy, basically. But MRC TV is reporting FBI NAB's latest Starbucks bombing suspect, ISIS linked to previous attacks. ISIS suggests more attacks at Starbucks. A suspect in the bombing of three Albuquerque, New Mexico Starbucks is now in federal custody. Uh, and the FBI is, is hinting that more attacks could be coming to Starbucks. But I thought Starbucks was all about, you know, love, peace, and understanding type of stuff. And, you know, not allowing guns. And uh, Starbucks is, gun, is a gun-free zone, right? Yeah, so... You know, they don't, they don't, and they don't like people saying that their name is Trump because they'll call the cops on you. Uh, that, that has happened in more than one occasion 
baristas have called the police when somebody said their name was Trump. Um, well, there you have it. So the, the notion that being a gun-free zone is now starting to attract, <laughs> starting to attract uh, the attention of ISIS and other terrorists. Look, folks, I'm not making this stuff up. <laughs> Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, 
or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Toys, Since 1947, toys, the United toys, States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Once more from the Bunker Eye studio, somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is, live free or die, it is not big government or bust here on this Tuesday morning, November the 29th in the year of our Lord 2016. The call-in number is the same as usual, 603-835-3226. And um, as we're rolling right along here in more stuff in the paper pile is overly full this morning you know how is it that we can live in a society that is supposed to be paperless and yet we're probably using more paper than ever before we really are i mean, it's just especially government didn't government mandate i'm pretty sure government was mandating um re reduction in paper usage uh, but our government hasn't done that once again, government dictating to the rest of us how we have to operate, and they don't follow the same rules. How about the email storage stuff? Do you know that if you're, if you're a corporate, what is it, a corporation or a business with more than 50 employees, you have got to store your emails? If you're, well, I, yeah, if you're a corporation, if you're incorporated, and um, you issue stock outside of, you know, if it's traded stock, then um, I think that's how the law, law works. You have to um, save and store all your emails. And that, that's created a, a, an entirely new mini industry of um, email storage systems and hardware and software. And yet we, have, we had a public servant by the name of Hillary Clinton, who bypassed that. And she isn't being punished, but you be a CEO of a company that doesn't keep your email records the way the government says you're supposed to and see if you get away with not going to jail. I'm not even talking about, you know, discussing classified national secrets or anything via email. Just don't, don't even think about that part. Just 
don't comply with the government's regulation on how to handle your company's emails and storage of, of such and see if you don't get in trouble. Yeah, but um, we're supposed to believe that this, this woman is, is so, so adept and so wonderful and so smart. You know, you know actually, although she really isn't all that smart, but she's devious. There's a difference between smart and devious. It is devious to do what she did. She knew exactly what she was doing, and I don't care what she says. That, well, I didn't know, and I was following the law, and I only did what other sta- uh, secretaries of state did, and blah. She knew exactly what she was doing. Problem is that the woman wasn't smart enough not to get caught. I mean, if you're going to do something like that, you better have all your bases covered. I mean, she's not even smart enough to hire smart people. What is the first thing, if you're getting in trouble for all your email stuff, you know, that you're supposedly not supposed to be doing, and you have people working for you that, are, that have also been doing, using this email server and sending you stuff and back and forth and all that kind of stuff the same illegal way, wouldn't you, and you got in trouble for it, and the FBI was now investigating, wouldn't you make sure that all your T's were crossed and uh, I's were dotted? In other words, wouldn't you make sure that you covered your tracks? Well, Hillary isn't even smart enough to hire smart people to surround her with. How do you have a husband like Anthony Weiner and not secure his computers and make sure all the information that pertains to you, Uma Abedin, is no longer available. How is it that you you have this guy who can't who now admits that he has a sex addiction? I don't think that's an addiction at all. It's just somebody who can't who refuses to control himself. But you have a guy who's getting out who's out there getting caught left and right, uh, doing sending sexually explicit stuff, text, pictures, what have you, to women who aren't you, Uma, the wife of Anthony Weiner. But he's sending them to women of all ages, underage, you know, teenage girls, as well as legal adult women. And you don't scour every single device that he has for stuff on it that, that, especially, you know, a laptop that you've used yourself. How do you not secure that? How do you let this guy get in trouble so that the New York Police Department can easily come in with a court order and search that computer for evidence leading to, uh, possibly evidence leading to a conviction of Anthony Weiner for his sexual exploitations, and just let them find this stuff. How do you get 600,000 emails? I don't, I, this woman is not smart. She can't even hire smart people. I've, you know, look, our law enforcement agencies all over the world have often said that they are very glad and happy that the vast majority of criminals out there are stupid. Yes, there are some that are really smart. You, you, you know, and I know the only reason why Clintons don't don't go to jail is simply because of their Clintons. And they've been protected by the Democrat Party ever since Bill burst on the national scene. You know, what was that, 88, when he was at the Democratic Convention? But <laughs> These people have just been protected like nobody else has ever been protected by a political class before. Let me tell you who, who's been smart at crime. Crime bosses. You know, the, the mafia, Dons, the Godfathers, and, uh, and their, their replacements, you know, in, in some of these gangs. Um, you know, they're not really called, they're not called the mafia. You know, they're the Yakuza and, and other types of organized crime gangs. Those bosses are smart. They're hard to catch. 
because they're smart. It took us decades to land, to break the mafia and to get some of the Dons and the God, Godfathers. It was hard to do because they were smart people. It's hard to do today to get some of these organized crime leaders because they're smart people. They don't get caught. In fact, the way that uh, the vast majority of them actually get caught, if you want to use that term, is somebody under them, in order to save their own neck, rolls over on them. That's the only way any of these people get caught. The Clintons, on the other hand, I mean, they constantly get caught doing stupid stuff. And yet, they get a pass. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it either. I'm sorry, I just don't. And I know there are people out there right now that are upset that Donald Trump said that he wasn't going to pursue uh, criminal charges against Hillary Clinton. But let, let me give you, you, Trump, you Trumpsters out there who are upset with Donald for saying that, let me tell you, it's not up to Donald. It's not up to President-elect Donald Trump. It's up to the Attorney General. And it's up to the investigative services such as the FBI and your local police departments to bring the DOJ the evidence that they need to try to prosecute these cases. The president cannot get involved or he's obstructing justice. Yeah, even for a president, obstructing justice is illegal. So he cannot, he can... He can prevent the Clintons from being, you know, from being investigated any further by appointing people who won't do it. But the people that that we've already seen in the pipeline and that he's already appointed, if they have the ability to do so, they look like they're going to investigate. So the president really can't dictate overtly what happens in the DOJ and our justice system. His job is to uphold the law, and therefore he has to be upholding the law himself. He can't interfere because that would not be legal. But hey, you know, you guys are going to get out there and, and before the guy even takes the oath of office, you're going to be upset with him? No, look, I've told you people, you've got to be patient. And I've also told you to expect that Donald Trump is not going to be able to deliver on every single promise that he's made. Not because that he's going to back out of them, just simply because of the way our government wheels grind. He's not going to be able to do it in four years. He's probably not going to be able to do it in eight years. But as long as he appoints people to the cabinet levels that will attempt, honestly, seriously attempt to do what he promised that he was going to do. You can't chastise him for that. So give the guy a break and give him a chance even to get in office first. I'm not saying don't hold his feet to the fire. I'm just saying give him a chance. Now we got people out there, you know, who are already talking about, well, yeah, he's just like the rest of them. He's, they're not even giving the guy a chance. He hasn't even taken the oath of office yet. You realize there's nothing that he can, other than appointing his cabinet, which must be approved by Congress, he can't do anything yet. He really, he has no power as of yet. Got to give the guy a chance here. Um, in any case, 43,000 out of the 43,000 uh, Somali refugees that were brought in under Obama and settled into the U.S., the Washington Examiner is reporting that 99% of them were Muslim. Just saying, just saying, when they're trying to figure out who this, isn't it funny how we always try to figure out who these Muslim terrorist attackers are after they do their dastardly deed? And we wonder, why did they do it? What was their motivation? Where did they come from? Why do we got to do this every single time? They're murdering Muslim thugs. 
who do this in the name of, of their God, Allah. We know what the motivation is. Why do we think that we got to try to figure out what their motivation is? They tell us what their motivation is. Oh, we can't jump to conclusions. We're not jumping to conclusions. They write it. Well, just because they write it, Rod, doesn't mean that's their true motivation. Spoken like a true liberal. Liberals, they hate you just as much, if not more, than conservatives in this country. Because you guys are all for the stuff that they can't stand. You know, you're for abortion. They don't believe in that. You're for gay rights. They don't like gays. They killed them. You know, they, uh, you want to go soft in crime? No, they want to chop off your hands or behead you on, on most crimes. They don't like you more than they don't like me. I, I know, you, but you guys are so full of peace, love, and understanding, you can't fully understand and grasp that, but they don't like you. And I think they're telling you that by targeting your favorite national coffee house called Starbucks. I didn't realize that they tried to blow up three of them already. Where Where is all the liberal in, indignation uh, of these... Muslim terrorists trying to blow up Starbucks. You'd think they'd be all over that. No, well, they can't. They can't do it because and that would mean that they're not so full of peace, love, and understanding, which we know they're not anyway. Hey, you know, all those protests from the Occupy Wall Street movement to the anti-Trump movement now, nothing, there's no, no love, peace, and understanding about any of that. Am, am, am I wrong in that? Am, am I missing something? I mean, really? Peace, love, and, and understanding? Does people really have that in their heart? No, I don't think so. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year.
603-835-3226. That is the number to call should you wish to join me here live here on the Rod Eccles Show. And um, we'll put you on the air if you can get through. And most people can get through. It's not difficult. However, if you get put on hold, be patient. If you have to wait a couple of minutes, be patient. Because, well, you just have to be patient. Jill Stein is out there once again. And here's a has-been woman that was a has-been before she even got into the race. In any case, this whole recount stuff. It is just a ploy. It's, it, it's a ploy for two reasons. It's a scam for two reasons. One, she's raised more money now in the past two weeks than she did basically almost her entire campaign for president. I mean, really? What is she, what is she up to, like five or six million already uh, for this recount effort? And what you, what you fools who are supporting her don't realize is that some of the deadlines have passed in states where she says she wants to uh, do a re- Pennsylvania, for instance. I, I guess the deadline, according to Pennsylvania election officials, the deadline to, uh, to, an, to want or request a recount has passed. I don't, you know, she can probably sue, but there's no, they, the deadline has been there. They're not changing the rules at the last minute. Unlike what Al Gore tried to do in 2000. Uh, so I don't know how she's going to get around that. I just don't think it's going to happen. But in Wisconsin, they said that, you know, we were going to, uh, they were going to just have a recalibration of and not do a hand, hand by hand recount. So now she wants to sue them. But here's, here's something. Listen to this clip about Jill Stein. Uh, she was asked on CNN, uh, asked, why do this now? Why, why do this recount? Here's her answer. Well, put, let me put it this way. Why would anyone not want to count the votes and to be sure that they are counted accurately? What we know is that Uh, There were lots of hacks taking place around this election, hacks into voter databases, into party databases, into individual email accounts. And what we also know, unfortunately, is that the equipment that we use, much of it is not just open to hacks. It it basically invites hacks and malfeasance, tampering, human error, etc. Some of the voting machines in use in Wisconsin, for example, have actually been prohibited in the state of California because they've basically been proven to be wide open to tampering. So what we're saying is, you know, not that, um, uh, you know, hacking or fraud has necessarily taken place. I don't think we have evidence of that. But I think it's uh, only natural. Wait, stop, stop. We don't have any evidence that any hacking has taken place. We don't have any evidence that fraud has taken place. And yet you have stood in the way, you and your party, the Democrat Party, and, and the communists over there have stood in the way with every opportunity that we've tried to bring forth, every legis- bit of legislation that we tried to bring forth to close these loopholes of potential fraud and hacking. They have stood in the way of it. Now they want to use that as an excuse for this? That she has no evidence, but hey, let's just go and recount anyway. Why? She has no, no chance of winning. And unless there was some massive miscount, there's no way that Trump's going to lose the lead, the massive lead that he actually had in Wisconsin, although they're calling it a slim lead. Not really. And it's good for Americans to be reassured that our votes are counted, especially after such a divisive and bitter election where 80 percent of Americans, according to a New York Times poll, basically said, They were disgusted with this election. They didn't like the candidates that we were limited to. They were screaming for open debates and other choices. It was a very bitter election where so many people were voting against their worst fear rather than for the candidate that they wanted. I think this is a very positive step. And the fact that it has basically funded itself overnight reflects the incredible hunger out there 
among the American people to actually start doing something positive and to start creating an election system that we can believe in. So she's out there advocating to recount because people were voting against something. Uh, you know, to, to run away from their fe- Look, you, the Democrat Party and you and your communist have uh, put these fears in people's minds. And this is just absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, and it, it was funded basically overnight with the help of the Democrat Party. And, the, and we now know the Clintons are involved in it, her campaign. Uh, I thought her campaign was over. I thought she was done. I thought she lost. What? Now the Clintons are back? Man, we can't get rid of these idiots. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastating injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. There you go, buddy. 
The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Welcome back. 603-835-3226 is the number to call. Should you wish to be a part of this program with your vocal cords, you can do so. Now, before I get back to Jill Stein, it is that time of the hour to bring to you another oldie but goodie. Well, at least from last year anyway. Uh, Christmas music. And this is, uh, this is a piece by Wes Putnam. Again, westputnam.com, I do believe is his website. And uh, don't forget, if you have... What the devil? All of a sudden I have this tremendous interference here. There we go. I think, think that may have gotten rid of some of it. Um, I have no idea why. This stuff does that sometimes, folks. I do apologize for some of the interference. I don't know where that's coming from. I tend to think it's coming from the Internet, my ISP. Well, anyway, let's get to the song by Wes Putnam uh, called Once in Royal David's City. This is again uh, a, a piece from a piece of music from last year's Christmas expose. David Putnam, we, or excuse me, West Putnam, westputnam.com, once in Royal David's City. Once in Royal David's City stood a lowly cattle shed. Where a mother laid her baby In a manger for his bed Mary was that mother mild Jesus Christ, her little child He from heaven who is God and Lord of all and his shelter was a stable and his cradle was a storm with the poor and mean and lowly lived on earth our Savior And our eyes at last shall see him Through his own redeeming love For that child so dear and gentle Is our Lord in heaven above And he leads his children on To the place where he is gone Not in that poor lowly stable With the oxen standing by We 
shall see him but in heaven Set at God's right hand on high Where like stars his children crowned All in white shall weigh around Once in royal David's city Stood a lowly cattle shed Once in royal David's city by Wes Putnam, westputnam.com If you like that, you might like more of his stuff. Um, Now these guys have, uh, well, see I... Uh, these guys have what we what we call beautiful Chris, uh, Christian voices. Now, well, I say that because they're not they're not like your pop culture voices today in your pop music. Um, they're not overly. Do- these people don't have that type of equipment to make them sound that good. Have you ever been surprised? Remember when? Um, uh, I think it was uh, New Kids in the Block when they were accused of lip syncing at their concerts. And in order to prove that they were actually singing, uh, I think they were on Good Morning America. They sang a song a cappella on Good Morning America. They sounded terrible. I mean, I, it was awful. They were off key. Now, it's not easy singing a cappella, I get it, but. They were supposed to be a professional boy band of the day, and they had already been on tour for numerous years and had a few albums under their belt. They should have been able to get it right. But they couldn't because they didn't have the talent. The talent was manufactured. And a lot of these artists of today, a lot of them, their voices on their recordings are doctored, which is why... Some people wonder if they're the same people in live concerts as they are on their on their albums and CDs. Because live concerts, it's a lot more difficult to doctor the voice than it is in a recording. Well, these people here that have that present their their stuff to me, they they don't have the ability to because that equipment is expensive. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars for those types of mixers and and uh, remixers to modulate voices to make them sound better. Uh, I mean, they actually, you literally, if you're doing, if you have a home studio, they, they don't have that equipment. You actually have to rent a, a, a real recording studio in order to have access to that. And most of, most of these independent artists do not do that because again, renting a studio it also can be very expensive. Um, so the, a lot of these people do a lot of their mixing and stuff at home. Now there's some bit of, voice fixing they can do. But usually when you hear them on their recordings and you hear them live, they sound nearly exactly the same. Not so true of many of today's pop stars. Which is why I don't go to concerts, really. One, they're overpriced. And two, they they, they don't sound anything like they do on their recording so you're wondering if you're listening to the same person and hey we have been fooled before anybody remember Millie Vanilli yeah <laughs> they even didn't they win Grammys too for for their for their lip syncing <laughs> we've heard of we've heard of ghost written books but that was the first time that that uh, that we know of that ghost singers actually won a Grammy uh, <laughs> but they didn't get the Grammy because it went to the face, uh, the, the, the duo. And one, one of them is of Millie Vanilli. I can't remember which one it is. I don't remember their names, but, um, one of them is, has passed away. He's been gone for a while now. Um, but they never lived that down. They went into hiding seclusion and what have you. But these guys, this is, these, these are their real voices. And, uh, that was Wes, Wes Putnam. I'd rather listen to people like that over these over-amplified, over-hyped pop stars any day. Um, besides, a lot of the pop stars, they make bazillions of dollars and they don't have any real talent. 
I know I'm probably going to step in it, but Beyonce, anyone? Uh, really? I mean, why is she still around? I mean, if you wa- well, I know I'm getting off topic here, but let's take Madonna for instance. Now, Madonna has never said that she has been that she has a, a, a fantastic voice and and she has no vocal range. We know that. She knows that. She doesn't pretend either. Madonna actually sounds in her concerts the way she does on her CDs. The only difference is in her concerts because she used to, I don't she's getting too old to, to bounce around like she used to, but the only difference was the voice modulation because she was busy dancing and putting on a show while she was singing. A lot of these stars today don't do that. They don't do that. And if you ever see somebody dancing around and there's no bouncy in their voice, no modulation because they're moving around, you know they're lip syncing. Just a little bit of a hint there. Because human beings cannot run and dance and jump on stage and sing at the same time without you noticing it in their voice. It's just the way it is. And if, and if you don't hear that, then you know they're lip syncing. And they wear the, a lot of, they have these wireless mics now, but the, the microphone is so big, it's hard to see their mouth. So if they screw up, it's hard to tell when they're lip syncing. Uh, that's why they wear them, by the way. I have some inf- side information on that. Whenever you see a, a music artist on stage wearing those, those wireless head mics and that microphone in front of their mouth is large. It's got that big pop screen in front of it. The reason why it's there is to hide their mouth because at least some of their songs are lip syncing. No joke, not fooling you. They're fooling you and you're paying good money to see them live. And what they're doing is dancing around while playing their CD for you. Um, Just saying. Just saying. Jill Stein. Jill Stein is still out there trying to, uh, you know, gen up this support for this recount. And all this is designed to do, and because the Clintons are also involved, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Clintons were actually the ones that pushed for her to do this in the first place, because they don't want to do anything uh, themselves uh, and be caught doing it. But look, the Democrats are already, already out there using Jill Stein's recount crap as a political tool to raise money. Now Stein has raised like four or five or six million dollars already, as as you heard her say herself, from people and this is this has nothing to do with recounts and making sure every because if you want to do that, why don't we recount some of the so called close races in in the states that Hillary won? Now I'm not talking California, but you know, well what about some of the other states? She won, didn't she win Minnesota? Let's do a recount in Minnesota. Washington State, she won there. Let's do a recount in Washington State. I mean, the only only place you can honestly say there was no contest for Trump because he didn't really campaign there was California and New York State. Those are Hillary's. But how about all the rest? Maine was pretty close, right? Although it was uh, it was issued late last night that uh, or yesterday that uh, Michigan finished their counting finally three weeks after the election and Donald Trump Trump won. Well, that was on Jill Stein's. But Jill Stein was already talking about recount recounting Michigan before the count was even done. Now, how much you want to bet if Michigan said that Hillary actually won, she would have dropped that recount. She would have. So now, now Wisconsin says, well, we're not going to hand count each and every vote. We're just going to recalibrate, re-add everything up to make sure it was accurate. And that's not making Stein happy. So now she's suing Wisconsin, who's refused to order a hand count. Well, that's their law. What are you going to do, sue Pennsylvania next because she missed the deadline to challenge the, the count in, in Pennsylvania? And if they think that they can take away these uh, these delegates to keep Trump from getting 270, well, here's a dirty little secret behind that. The 270 is not arbitrary. 
It is necessary to get the presidency because that is the majority of the available delegates. The, the availability of the, of the electoral college. It has to be the majority. Well, if you take out 10 of them from Wisconsin, for instance, well, then that number of 270 gets lowered because the majority needed is less than 270. If you take out the 16 from Michigan, well, that 270 is lowered equally because the majority needed is not going to be 270. So Trump still wins. Because these recounts have to be done and completed by, what, December 13th? And if they're not completed, well, then they just say, well, we won't, you know, those, those delegates are not available because it, it's, it hasn't been settled. So he needs the majority of the available delegates. Which means if you take out the 16 for Michigan, because they got it all tied up in court or something, well... December 13th rolls around. We've got to certify the election. We don't count those 16. So now you don't need 270, Donald. You need less than that, which would probably be around 260 or something. He still wins. So really, at this particular point, there is no, the only way that, that Donald Trump cannot get the nod on December, was it this year's December 20th, I do believe, is if they take those three states, which now it has to be two, and give those delegates to Hillary. That's why this is a sham. It's a fraud. It is only, they're only trying to keep him from taking the oath of office, which in this country, because we're a nation of laws set forth by the Constitution, they cannot prevent it. The only way they can prevent Donald Trump from taking the oath of office of the presidency is somehow stealing those delegates, enough delegates away from him and giving them to Hillary. That is why Hillary is back in it. That's why she didn't shut down her campaign. She still has campaign staff. She didn't shut down. I guess she got up off that chair from reading the book and drinking her booze long enough to, uh, to decide to throw in with, uh, with Jill Stein to try to steal the election that she failed to do back earlier this month in November. And you try as you might. You know, even when you vote them out, the Clintons just won't go away. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. 
This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. By the way, today is Giving Tuesday. Just just so you know, it is Giving Tuesday. Um, and that is here in the U.S. of A. and in Canada as well. I, I know I shouldn't say that, but that's I say that with affection. I love Canada. I know they elected Trudeau, who, by the way, Trudeau... Uh, uh, the other day was out there with a flourish of praise for Fidel Castro, but there was a backlash in his own country about that. And so now prime minister of Canada, Gary, uh, Mr. Trudeau will not be attending the Fidel Castro memorial service. Evidently he's being cremated. And, uh, so there won't be a, a body that laying in state. Um, I don't, maybe they're cremating him. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, Fidel was assassinated, and they're getting rid of the evidence. That well, uh, that's. I'm not the first person who brought the, who brought that that theory up. I mean, the guy was 90 years old, so everybody thinks, well, you know, he died of old age. Um, that would be, you know, a logical conclusion. But why would you, for somebody who was so beloved in his country? Why would you deny the people of being able to say their last goodbyes? Instead, they're going to cremate him. I, for those of you who love Cuba, and, then, and there's nobody in, there's no Cubans in the U.S. of A. that that is uh, that has lost any any love for Fidel. And they didn't have any. I mean, remember Gloria Estefan and and uh, and her husband of the Miami Sound Machine? Oh yeah, they, they 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 have blasted people like Jesse Jackson who gave praise to Fidel. The guy was a murderer. He was a tyrant. He was an evil dictator. He lived a lavish lifestyle, and this is coming from inside Cuba and some of his people that that worked with him and around him and protected him. He lived a lavish lifestyle while the rest of his, the people outside of the Communist Party um, who, who ruled the country were living in utter poverty. I mean, this, guy was, this guy was just evil personified. Plain and simple. I, I, look, I... I'm going to take my cue from history and from people who actually live on, lived under his regime. And they they come here for a reason, to get away from him and his brother and the uh, and the the communist party. By the way, speaking of evil personified, if you are a criminal, I, the days of petty crime might be coming to an end. And that's simply because drones are everywhere now. And they're only, there's only going to be more of them up there, government and private. And this is a case in point now where evidently the first drone arrest has taken place in Oklahoma. 
Two men were arrested Monday morning. This comes from Oklahoma's own News 1 on Channel 6. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, two men were arrested Monday morning after a business burglary and a short chase by a drone. An eyewitness saw the break-in happening. That eyewitness was talking to a drone pilot outside the vault, I guess that's a business, where the break-in happened. So when the suspects took off, the drone did too and followed them. They were quickly caught by police due to the drone <laughs> due to the drone tracking them. Like I said, it's a good thing criminals are not getting smarter. Some of <laughs> they're not getting any smarter. Thank heavens. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend 
the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry joy Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Toys, Since 1947, toys, the United toys, States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Transportation, uh, transportation secretary. So Trump continues to fill out his cabinet. Uh, and w- one of the things that CNN is uh, also apoplectic about and, and and in the dumps about is that they're they're also reporting Donald Trump won't change who Donald Trump is, and and they're trying to uh, they have this expose as to why Donald Trump won't change. Isn't this something? They, Donald, Donald Trump won't, he won't change for them. He won't meet them in the middle or cross the aisle. And, they're, and, and every other, just about every other uh, Republican has done so. Why won't Donald Trump? <laughs> Welcome back. All of you wonderful liberty lovers and ecclesiastites all across uh, the girl, uh, all across the world, girl. <laughs> Well, the Earth, they do call it Mother Earth, so all, all across the girl. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from my Bunker Eye studio, somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still live free or die. It is not big government or bust. And yes, I did check this morning, and no, it hasn't changed. Call in number for this Tuesday morning, which is November the 29th in the year of our Lord 2016, is 603 835 3226. Uh, you can avail yourself of that number if you choose to do so, and uh, we'll put you on the air. Yeah, so, um, so, Chow, C- C-H-A-O is how you spell her name, Elaine Chow. And I guess she's the former labor secretary, and she's now being put up to be 
transportation secretary. Well, if she's already been a in a cabinet, presidential cabinet, isn't that an insider? Uh, I, I know some people are worried, well, Donald Trump promised he'd drain the swamp. Well, sometimes you need insiders to help you do that because they know where the bodies are buried. They know how to deal with a lot of the, the snake oil salesmen in Washington. And they can help you. If, they ha- if they're of the same mindset, you know, there are people in Washington that, that, are, that are insiders that hate the way the system is right now. They believe the system needs to be changed and they want to be a part of changing it so they can be a conduit to help Trump make that change. Yeah, well, it's true. Uh, not, not everybody who's on the inside is bad. I think we need to keep that in mind. Uh, most of them are. Most of D.C. needs to go away, needs to be drained away. I agree. But some of them will actually help make that happen. He's going to need people that can help him make that. Uh, Trump is going to need people that can help him make that happen. And they all can't be outsiders. They, all, they, they can be strong, independent insiders who believe as he does. And there are some there. And Donald Trump has named a few of them to his cabinet already. Um, I, think they'll, I think they'll be hawks on this stuff. They'll, now, understand as well, again, be patient. D.C. is a huge swamp. Now, let's be frank. Trump is not going to be able to drain the whole thing. He can start the drainage. He can drain a lot of it. Uh, but he may, he may not even get to the halfway point of draining it, but he can drain a lot. And then we, the people, have to make sure that we elect a successor to him that will carry the torch and continue to drain that swamp because that swamp is huge folks it's it's deep i mean i don't even know why i I understand why i use the connotation as swamp but it's more like an ocean that needs to be drained but nobody's ever drained an ocean before that's not possible but you can drain a swamp so I understand why he used the word swamp. And everybody thinks a swamp is being mucky and dirty and smelly and stinky and, and filled with creatures that you don't want to see or come across. Uh, you know, alligators and crocs and pythons and you know, all kinds of other nefarious creatures that nobody wants to have roaming around in, in their backyard. So I fully understand why he used the term swamp because that's what it is. That it's a mucky mucky stinky mess but it's the size of an ocean and it needs to be drained but it's going to take some time but uh ted cruz is out there talking about this very thing and he's warning he's warning the gop uh, rightfully so cruz says to trump and the gop if we don't deliver on Trump's promises of draining the swamp, there will be pitchforks and torches in the streets. And uh, he's absolutely correct. People are, are you know, they, they, are, they need, they need to do and start following through what they promise. And the GOP especially needs to make sure that they do not block Trump at every, in every passage, in every hallway, in every corridor. Which the GOP has done in the past. I mean, they've you know they they've taken some conservative ideas that the people especially wanted, and didn't do anything with them, or they blocked them. But here here's what Cruz had to say ab- ab- about about this. I think the election was an incredible vindication for the American people across this country, and especially those, as you note, in rural America, in what elites on both coasts consider to be flyover country. This election could be well understood as the revenge of flyover country. I think the Clinton campaign found themselves utterly flabbergasted. They had not even contemplated the possibility that they might not prevail. And that, I think, is a direct result of not listening to and not hearing the American people, the voices of frustration, the voices that have been ignored, the voices that were crying out, More than anything else, leave us alone. 
Those voices haven't been heard in Washington by Democrats and far too often by Republicans either. And I think this election poses an opportunity for us to listen to the voices of the American people, to hear them and to come together and actually solve the real problems in this country. When you're given control of the executive and the legislature, it's time to put up or shut up. There are no excuses. We've got to deliver, and I think that is what the voters across the country expect, and it's what I very much hope we will give them. And that was from Ted Cruz himself talking about uh, the revenge of flyover country. And if you look at the electoral map, I mean, it is red all over. And even in, even if you look at the blue states that went Clinton, most of them, uh, most of their land mass is red and not blue. So this is the American people all across this country, outside of uh, many of our major cities, have just decided that they've had enough. They've had more than enough. Now, now this is also true of when you under, when you try to understand. Let's see if you can under, if I can get, explain this so you can understand this a little bit better. Why the country is divided the way it is divided? You have these urban centers. These urban centers that we call cities and, and metropoli- uh, metropolises, uh, meaning you know Boston itself has about 600,000 people, the city itself. But if you look at the greater metrop- Boston metropolis, uh, there's some 4 million people that live within the greater Boston area. And you get the same thing if you go out to L.A. or Houston or Chicago or um, even Philadelphia uh, places like that, you have a you have a greater concentration of people living just outside of the city that encompass the city, and they call that the the greater area of that particular city or the metropolis of that area. Those are heavily populated uh, centers in this country, and it's true with most of the world. Uh, same thing happens, but. In this country, where we find the most so-called need for government assistance, welfare occurs within these metropolis areas. Now, that doesn't mean that rural areas are rich, because they're not. It doesn't mean the countryside and the rural and the the outlying areas are and uh, outlying suburbs, not the inner suburbs, but the outlying suburbs, they're not rich either. But for some reason, those people t- take take to heart the notion of doing for themselves more than those in the inner cities and metropolis areas do. So there's less demand for governmental services out there. And the services that they would like or do demand, the government really doesn't deliver. Because everything is concentrated on these urban centers. And I think that these people in in these areas that are not within these urban centers are tired of spending their tax money, seeing their tax money go to these urban centers and being wasted. And you can see that in the electoral map where Trump wins just about every non-urban county in the country. And Clinton, her big claim to fame is winning most of the urban centers. Now, in states that don't have large urban centers, they can't outvote the rural voters. This is why more states should probably utilize the, uh, not the winner-take-all standard, but uh, a winner of that district takes the delegates in which case we wouldn't be talking about a recount of an entire state uh like wisconsin or michigan or pennsylvania um because trump would have would be it would be an electoral landslide he'd have probably well over 400 electoral votes and it would be a moot point 
And 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 I'm not just saying that for for Trump because you know it, it could happen with a Democrat could could come along and do the same thing. But I think that would be more if they want to talk about being fair. I think that would be more fair that if we utilize the electoral college in that way. Now that I think there are what nine or ten states that do do it that way. They they give it by district, so congressional district. So if you win that congressional district, like Maine, Maine for instance has two congressional districts. And you don't, if you win the popular vote in that congressional district, you get that congressional delegate or whatever number of delegates there are for that district. Uh, you, you don't get it if you just win the state. Sure, that's great. Uh, but you don't necessarily get all four, de- four delegates for Maine. So if you win, you have to win both congressional districts in Maine in order to get uh, all four delegates. I think they should do that here in New Hampshire, too. Because, again, we have the population centers that are being inundated with liberals from Massachusetts, New York, and California that are moving into southern New Hampshire, uh, into, like, Salem, New Hampshire. They're moving into Portsmouth, New Hampshire. They're moving into Nashua, New Hampshire, uh, where the vast majority of the rest of the state is still solidly conservative. Oh, yeah, and Keene, New Hampshire, is also quite liberal due to the college over there but the rest of the state is really quite solid conservative but if you it's easy for the southern part of the state to outvote the rest of the entire state and that's what's been happening of late and we can see that with our with our senatorial and, and congressional elections uh, the district that Frank Genta just lost. Well, his district is heavily populated by, you know, our, our our biggest urban centers here in the state. And they're, of course, tend to lean liberal because of who's moving in. And don't 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 think for an, for an instant that that is not done on purpose by the wonderful leftists in this country. You know, they can read an electoral map, too. They know how to win. Although they haven't been winning so much lately. Again, another another indication that that this country is not leaning left is the number of Democrats that have lost seats and the number of Democrat, uh, Democratic governors that there are currently in state capitals, which is not many compared to Republicans. But 33, 34 governors are now Republican. All the legislatures that, that there are that are controlled uh, by Republicans, far more than are, than are controlled by Democrats. County level, you know, we've seen Democrats are still down some 12, 1,300 seats from 2008 all across this country. That's a lot. That is a humongous amount. And so the GOP, you know, Cruz is right. They better start paying attention. And now finally that the, the uh, flyover country has gotten their choice for president. And if they don't deliver, there is going to be hell to pay. And unfortunately, the only recourse they have at this point in time is to go Democrat. And that, like in 2008, in their hissy fit against George Bush, would be a disaster for this country. So GOP is going to have to de- to deliver, or there will be pitchforks and rifles in the streets. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. Uh, the immigration crisis that that's been on the news every night no no it, that it, it hasn't been on the news every night well evidently again from mrctv.org um that immigration crisis that it, that involves chilling you know illegal chilling that have that, remember those that were shipped here by their parents by train and obama even flew a bunch of them here Remember that? Well, yeah, it hasn't gone away. That issue has not gone away. It's just not being reported. But here from MRCTV.org, the Obama administration ships another 6,051 kids to American communities in the month of October. Uh, Basically, what they're reporting here is with only a few months left to go before a new president obtains the keys to the Oval Office, the Obama administration released another 6,000 51, 51 unoccupied or unaccompanied alien children into American communities in the month of October. This averages about 195 kids per day. According to recent stats released by the Executive Office for Immigration Review, only about 45% of all immigration cases open for unaccompanied minors since July have been closed. July of 2014. So now Obama is continuing to flood our neighborhoods with these illegal alien children, <clears throat> which we know, which has been reported, especially out in Colorado, um, that eventually those those little chillins family members get to join them. You know, I told you, I warned you about this when we first heard about this back in 2013 and 2014, that those kids were coming here as a precursor to getting their, their whole family here. And that these parents were, I mean, you know, we used to, we used to ask the question, how could a parent do that to their kid? Well, they're, they're trying to get their kid a better life. And what better way to do that if they can't get in to the country is to send the kid in. Because Obama welcomed them with open arms. Remember that flood that we had for a while? Saw it on the news almost every night about another, you know, thousand kids here, a few hundred here, you know, a couple of thousand here. We're coming in by train, plane. The only way they weren't coming in was by boat. 
Because they didn't need to, unless they were coming from Cuba. So they come here. They get put in these detention. All these detention centers are terrible. They're horrible, horrible, horrible. And so they start disseminating them and distributing them across the country. And then guess what? These kids get put into foster homes. And some of them, some of them, not most of them, but some of them end up getting adopted. But um, most of them are still in foster care, which, by the way, means that we, the American people, pay for them. And then their, their parents and their siblings get to come eventually and get resettled, paid for by, yeah, you and me, our tax dollars. The kid is the lead. The kid is the arrowhead. And then you know what comes after that, right? After the, you know, after the arrowhead? Yeah. Yeah, you got it. It's called the shaft. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war. 
as they struggle with devastating injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. And welcome back. 603-835-3226. And now it is that time once again that time of the hour where I bring you another classic from last year, the Christmas songs. This one is from my good friend, William Lewis Van Horn Jr. Most of you probably know him as Billy Van Horn. Uh, If you've ever talked to him or you've ever heard him, he's got a beautiful voice. But again, he's got one of those deep voices, those baritones, you know, uh, anybody remember Barry White? Yeah, Barry. <laughs> Barry White. Women used to say all that you know they could get all hot and bothered and fall in love just by listening to Barry White talk. Forget him singing. All you had to do was talk because Barry White had one of the deepest voices I have ever heard in my life. Um, now there there have been a few people that have come that have had a voice as deep, maybe slightly deeper. There was a, a an, an older gentleman by the name of um, uh, his his acronym was Yoda. Uh, and he had a program called Yoda and Backpack, uh, his, pro, his protege um, and partner, much younger than he was. Um, his nickname was Backpack. I never asked how they got their nicknames, but Yoda had a very deep voice as well. It was like Barry White's. I mean, it was just ridiculously low. But for women, there's something sexy about That just goes to show how, you know, women like real men. And they view men with deeper, vo- and this has been studied over and over. There are all kinds of studies out there. Look it up if you don't believe me, but there have been studies all over the place where women view m- men as being ma- more manly if they have a deep voice. So these these guys that run around with these, uh, uh, now this, this is Western women, of course. Um, they view men with deeper voices as being sexier and more manly than men with, higher pitched voices. Well, I, it's probably for, you know, God probably did that for a reason. But anyway, this is from Billy Van Horn, Angels We Have Heard on High, his cover.
And that was Billy Van Horn's instrumental cover of Angels We Have Heard on High. That was him actually on the keys. And I do believe I remember him saying that he did a couple of the background instruments as well. It was a very talented family from what I understand. Um, highly talented man. He's also the leader, the head of Freedom Network, Radio Network, Freedom Radio Network. Um, and that's how I actually got to, got to meet with him. I've spoken with him a, a number of times on the phone. I have not met him in person, but, um, uh, yeah, talking to him, he's just, he just has that, that baritone voice. And you have to listen to a person when they, that has that kind of voice. Sometimes I wish on my voice, I, I should probably practice my voice to go deeper as well. Maybe get down into those baritone ranges. You know, actually when you do that, it's very tiring. It's hard to do that on purpose. So people that do it, that have it naturally because they just have the vocal cords, they are blessed, but men are blessed by God with that. Um, in, 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 in a way, you know, men kind of like women with a slightly deeper voice as well. I mean, Demi Moore, for instance, I mean, she just doesn't have exactly a high pitched voice. I know it's kind of gravelly. You got guys like that kind of, kind of voice too, I guess. Um, um, remember uh, um, Kathleen Turner? For a woman, another deep voice sex symbol of the 80s. Um, just just saying. For <laughs> uh, hey, this is a Christmas show, Rod. You can't be talking about sexy stuff. Well, here's something sexy. Well, maybe it's not so sexy, but um, the United States... <laughs> is the U.S. is going to fall short of their biofuels and ethanol targets. Yeah, uh, evidently, we will fall short of the targets uh, for renewable fuel standards that were set by Congress some time ago, and this is from the Washington Times. The federal renewable fuel standard will fall short of the goals laid out by Congress, government watchdogs said yesterday. Dealing another blow to the embattled program and giving more ammunition to critics who say it must be ended immediately. And it should. It never should have been started. The Government Accountability Office of the GAO reports to say that renewable fuel standard enacted by lawmakers in 2007 has been crippled by higher than expected costs of producing ethanol. I don't know who was expecting this stuff to be that cheap. It's not it, higher than expected by whom? The rest of us knew better. Uh, and other biofuels, by the boom in U.S. oil and gas production, which, by the way, we just found another shale oil field in Texas that is that has more oil in it than Saudi Arabia has. I mean, this is this is nonsensical. We're running out of oil. Well, by technical definition, when you use a gallon, that means that, that the Earth has a gallon less than it did before you used it. So, yeah, by that standard. But are we going to run out of it anytime soon? No. We're not. Again, this, you know, the leftists like to think, well, geez, you're just for big oil. I, big oil made this country and made civilized, uh, the, the civilized world the way we know it today. Without oil and natural gas, there would be no computers. Do people understand this? Now, the program which requires increased amounts of ethanol and other biofuels will be blended into the nation's gas supply each year. Now, that's a problem, too, because here's another story. Ethanol, um, how ethanol reduces your gas mileage, your MPG in your vehicle. So, strictly speaking, by adding ethanol, you're getting worse gas mileage, which means you've got to go to the pump more often, which means you've got to spend more money. You know, we have all these wonderful goals by the government saying that, you know, car manufacturers got to have a car that, you know, their average MPG has got to be 35 miles per gallon. I think it's got to be like 40 by the year 2020 or something like that. It's ridiculous. But they keep wanting, they want to go from this E10 at 10% ethanol to 15% ethanol. 
Because why? The ethanol lobby says that we're not buying enough ethanol. So one way to fix that is to increase the amount of ethanol in your gas, which means your MPG is going to drop. Now, according to this story from roadandtrack.com, Americans all over the country have noticed that their cars are getting less than stipulated gas mileage, especially if they have an older vehicle. They were getting less. They've been reporting this since 2006 about this ethanol blended fuel. There are people. Yeah, I used to I used to get 20 miles to the gallon driving around town. Now I'm lucky if I get 15 or 16. Well, the only change that has happened, and here's a, here's a report here. Here's a guy with a 2010 Nissan Frontier SE, you know, four liter V6, automatic. Now he said, I, yeah, I was getting 19.6 miles per gallon driving around town, but now I'm getting 16 and a half with the same driving. Is I've changed the air filter, kept the tires uh, uh, properly uh, pressurized. And rotated, taken the car to the dealer, done all kinds of you know work on it to make sure that it was operating at full function. He says the only change that has happened to his vehicle, according to the mechanics, oh well, you you know you you've been forced to switch over from full gas to this E10 blend. And yes, indeed, there is some scientific proof behind that. You see. Ethanol only has about two-thirds the heat power or energy that gasoline does. So therefore, it's not going to give you the same amount of power that gas will. Therefore, if you're not getting the same amount of power, you're going to have to use more of it. And now, most people will see a drop of anywhere of 10 to 15% on gas mileage. Now that adds up over a year. I don't care if it, you know, 10%, it's small. It's not small when you add it up. You know, two miles of the gallon or three miles of the gallon over a, a year of driving 20,000 miles or so, what does the average person drive? 12 to 15,000? That's what leases are built around, right? 12 to 15,000 miles. That adds up. That means you're going to be using more gas and more ethanol. And the other problem, obviously, with ethanol is that we're using food sources like corn and soy to make these biofuels. Well, that increases demand on those food sources, which then what? In turn, increases our food cost. And we're talking about using the very items, food items, that are the most prevalent in food in the Western world. We're talking soy and corn. One or both of those ingredients are in probably at least 75% of the foods that we consume, especially prepared stuff. And we want to use that as fuel that we burn and have it exhaust throughout our, our, from our tailpipes. Now, what type of civilized nation does that? Uses their fuel, uh, uses their food source as their fuel. And if you want to use non-corn and non-soy based um, medium to make biofuel, it becomes less efficient and more expensive. You know, there are people. That, well, we can take grass and 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 food byproducts that we don't use and turn it, but that process is even more expensive and more costly and more time consuming and more energy sucking than making it out of corn or soy. You're right. It takes energy to make gasoline, by the way. And it takes more energy to make a fuel that is less efficient than gasoline. but yet we're doing it because of these wacko environmentalists who tell us that it'll burn cleaner, which is not the case. Especially since we're burning more of it. 
even with the increase in efficiencies in our internal combustion engines. Do you realize if we just use straight gas, how much better and how more efficient these machines would be? Ethanol needs to stop, needs to stop being subsidized by government and being forced down our throats. If it is a true viable alternative fuel source, it will live on its own. The problem is it's not it's not a true environmentally friendly f alternative fuel source. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot like, you know, trying to switch everything over to to wind and solar. As far as being the major component of our energy production, it's not viable. It has its severe limitations. Yeah, you can, all, you can only make power from solar when the sun is shining. So, you know, at least half the day when you're dark, because the sun is on the opposite side of the world, your solar panels aren't going to be producing any power. Likewise, you know, the, the wind turbines only work when the wind is blowing and the wind has to be blowing at a certain speed in order to get those, especially those giant turbines to move. I mean, in most days, unless you're in some windy zone, you're not getting a, a wind that's 10 miles per hour or more to move those things. So if you, if the wind turbine isn't moving, it's not producing electricity. So what happens if it's in the middle of the night, there's no wind, and there's no sun? And that's the only way that we're powering everything. Unless you have some very good batteries, which in it, batteries in and of itself is an environmental nightmare, according to the left. You're out of luck. This alter and, and by the way, this whole nonsense with um, uh, global warming. Well, here's a little sad historical, actual. Well, it's not even history because it's, it's happening now. And this is from actually from coming from Nashua as we, uh, NASA, 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 our National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Uh, as reported by the Daily Mail UK, because you're not gonna you're not gonna get this kind of news here in the USA, but evidently, stunning new data indicates that El Nino drove record highs in global temperatures, suggesting rise will not be down to man-made emissions. In fact, global average temperatures over land have plummeted by more than one degree Celsius. This comes amid mounting evidence uh, run of record temperatures about to end. The fall revealed by NASA satellites has been caused by the end of El Nino. So once again, man was not the cause of this so-called man-made global warming, but it was the planet itself in this El Nino, a natural occurring phenomena. And now that El Nino is ending... So are these so-called record land temperatures. In fact, they're falling, these land temperatures are falling rapidly. Which means those people once affected by the warm warmth of El Nino are about to have some very bad winters. We're talking cold, snow, Probably akin to a few years ago, like here in New England, we had record cold and record snow like you would not believe. We broke records all over the place here in the Northeast. We'll look for it, something similar to happen again possibly this year and next year. So much for all that global warming crap. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. This whole business, it's an industry. In and of itself is this uh, anti-global, man-made global warming. And there are people out there who are, who are getting rich by ripping you off uh, with this nonsense. And they're, they're ensnaring a lot of our governmental regulators in this nonsense, which then increases our costs for just about everything from energy. And energy is the, is the lifeblood of our economy, of our whole entire civilization. Uh, if energy costs go, go up, everything else has to go up in order to be able to pay for that increased cost in energy. And this notion that we're running out of oil is a misnomer. We're not. We're always finding new sources, and we're always improving the efficiency of those items or engines that actually use so-called fossil fuels. The more efficient they become, the longer the current supply will last. Forget about finding new supply. The longer the current supply will last. And that's the way it's always worked, folks. It's the way it's always worked. It's the way it always will work. Well, we've come to the end of another wonderful program. At least I like to think it's wonderful. Uh, don't forget that if you are a musician, get your Christmas music in to me. you got until December 5th. Uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow. So until then, I'm Rod Eccles. Thanks for listening to The Rod Eccles Show. I'm out.